Hello, and welcome to Fiddle Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Distributed File System Replication. We are currently on the server Domain Controller 2, or DC2. The goal of this video is for us to set up a replication group that will replicate information between DC1 and DC2. Let's take a look at the folder shares we currently have on DC2. You will see that all the folders are empty. I do not have any folders or files in them yet. I want to replicate the folders and files from DC1 to DC2. I have to set up sharing on each of the folders in order to do this process. There, I converted all the folders into folder shares. Now I am ready to connect the folder shares from DC1 and DC2 together. We're back on DC1 so we can set up the DNS namespace replication. I'll open up the administrative tools and run the DFS management tool. There's already a replication group and it is devoted to replicating for Active Directory. We'll create a new replication group. We'll choose the multi-purpose choice at the top. I'm going to call this replication group Gemini, which means twin. Now I need to add the servers that will be involved with this replication group. We're going to choose a full mesh which means that each server will contact each other server. And here we can limit the amount of bandwidth that will be used. Now we have to identify which server we want to be the most dominant. In other words, if there's some sort of conflict between the information of DC1 or DC2, I want DC1 to win out. And now we need to add the folders that will need to be replicated together. In other words, I want the department shared folder of DC1 to correspond with the shared folder of DC2 so that they replicate together and stay in sync. Since we have three shared folders, I will need to do this three times. One for each share folder. In 
and now I have to give the specific information about where the shared folder is pointing to on the hard drive so it can correspond DC1 information with DC2 information at the local level the default is disabled but we have to enable it and give it the local hard drive location Okay, it looks like everything is summed up correctly. A lot of green check marks. Everything's fine. This is just a warning to let us know that we have to wait until Active Directory starts to replicate before the information is exchanged. Let's go back to DC2 and see if it has replicated already. Okay, let's take a look and see if the information has been replicated from DC1 to DC2. We'll go to the C drive and then go into the folder share on DC2. Let's take a look. Okay, the department folder is empty. And so is the software and user folders. It hasn't replicated yet. I'm going to force Active Directory to replicate. I'll open up the Sites and Services tool and have the server replicate now. There, now let's go back and check the folders. Okay, now we got the information inside of the department folder. Okay, it looked like it worked. The replication between DC1 and DC2 has occurred. In this video, we have looked at how we could use replication in order to bring fault tolerance and speed of access between sites for our customers. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.